64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker, and I'm here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. Today, we look at The Analects of Confucius by Confucius and William Jennings. In this video, we look at the wisdom of Confucius, China's most famous teacher, philosopher, and a political theorist whose ideas have profoundly influenced the civilization of East Asia and the whole world. His message of knowledge, benevolence, loyalty, and virtue is timeless. So stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. The great doctrine of Confucius was the unlimited despotism of the emperor and his moral precepts were intended to teach the emperor how to use his power right. But the emperor was only typical of all in the authority, the feudal duke, the judge on the bench, and the father of the family each could discharge his duties all right only by submitting to the moral discipline which Confucius prescribed. Men of superior mind busy themselves first in getting at the root of things, and when they have succeeded in this, the right course is open to them. Three points to examine self daily, whether in looking after other people's interests, I have not been acting wholeheartedly. Whether in my intercourse with my friends, I have not been true. And whether after teaching, I have not myself been practicing what I have thought. Let young people show filial piety at home, respectfulness towards their elders when away from home, and let them be circumspect, be truthful their love going out freely towards all, kind of cultivating goodwill to men. And if such a walk, there be time or energy left for other things, let them employ it in the acquisition of literally or artistic accomplishments. If you observe what people things usually take into their hands, watch their motives and then notice which particularly is that gives them satisfaction. Shall they be able to conceal from you what they truly are? Conceal themselves, indeed? Learning without thought is a snare. Thought without learning is a danger. When you know a thing, maintain that you do know it, and when you do not, acknowledge your ignorance. This is characteristic of knowledge. To a question as to what should be done, in order to render the people submissive to authority, Confucius replied, promote the straightforward and reject those whose courses are crooked. And the thing will be effective. Promote the crooked and reject the straightforward and the effect will be the reverse. Those who keep within restraints are seldom users slow to speak 
but prompt to act. It is the desire of a superior man in regard to old people. Give them quiet and comfort in regard to friends and associates. Be faithful to them in regard to the young. Treat them with fostering affection and kindness. It is difficult for persons to have constancy when they pretend to have that which they are destitute of. To be full when they are empty. To do things on a grand scale when their means are contracted. When the master fished with hook and line, he did not also use a net. The people may be put into the way that they should go, though they may not be put into the way of understanding it. The man who likes bravery and yet grounds under poverty has mischief in him. Not easily found is the man who, after three years' study, has failed to come upon some fruit of his toil. The really faithful lover of learning holds fast to the good way till death. He will not go into a state in which a downfall is imminent, nor take up his abode in one where disorder reigns. In his own village, Confucius presented a somewhat plain and simple appearance and looked unlike a man who possessed ability of speech. But in the ancestral temple and at court, he spoke with the fluency and the accuracy of a debater, but ever guardedly. And at court, conversing with the lower order of great officials, he spoke somewhat firmly and directly. With those of the higher order, his tone was somewhat more affable. When the prince was present, he was constrainedly reverent in his movements and showed a proper degree of grave dignity and demeanor. Do not wish for speedy results. Do not look at trivial advantages. If you wish for speedy results, they will not be far-reaching. And if you regard trivial advantages, you will not successfully deal with important affairs. Superior men, said the master, are modest in their words, profuse in their deeds. There are three attainments of a superior man which are beyond me. The being sympathetic without anxiety, wise without skepticism, and brave without fear. The scholar whose heart is in his work and who is philanthropic seeks not to gain a livelihood by any means that will do harm to his philanthropy. There have been men who have destroyed their own lives in the endeavor to bring that virtue into them to perfection. There are three kinds of friendships which are profitable and three which are detrimental to make friends with the upright with the trustworthy, with the experienced, is to gain benefit. To make friends with the subtly perverse, with the artfully plaint, with the subtle in speech, is detrimental. There are three kinds of pleasure, which are profitable and three which are detrimental. To take pleasure in going regularly through the various branches of ceremonial and music, in speaking of others' goodness, and having many worthy, wise friends is profitable. To take pleasure in wild, bold pleasures, in idling carelessly about, in the two jovial accompaniments of feasting is detrimental. Three errors there be, into which they who wait upon their superior may fall. Number one, to speak before the opportunity comes to them to speak, which is heedless haste. Number two, to refrain from speaking when the opportunity has come, which is concealment. And number three, speaking regardless of the mood he is in, which is blindness. Three things. A superior should guard against, number one, against the lust of the flesh, 
in his earlier years, while the vital powers are not fully developed and fixed. Number two, against the spirit of combativeness, when he has come to the age of robust manhood and when the vital powers are mature and strong. And number three, against ambitiousness, when old age has come on and the vital powers have become weak and decayed. Three things. Also, such a man greatly reveres the orderness of heaven, great men, in words of sages. They whose knowledge comes by birth are of all men the first in understanding. They to whom it comes by study are next. Men of poor intellectual capacity who yet study may be added as a yet inferior class. And the lowest of all are they who are poor in intellect and never learn. Nine things there are of which the superior man should be mindful to be clear in vision, quick in hearing, genial in expression, respectful in demeanor, true in word, serious in duty, inquiring in doubt, firmly self-controlled in anger, just and fair when the way to success opens out before him. If a person hold to virtue but never advance in it. And if he have faith in right principles and do not build himself up in them, how can he be regarded either as having such or as being without them? And there you have it, the Analects of Confucius. Please do help out. It is easy, simply like this video so more people can enjoy it, share it too, and spread the word. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and do stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it and read. Never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website. Find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and all of your behavior. And if you feel you are ready, to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further. Do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. Links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.